This is going to be the ultimate scouting report on Chase Winovich, and as far as I know, it's the only one on YouTube this detailed. Everything you need to know about this guy on film is right here, and I'm probably going to be making a similar video for other past prospects, starting with Nikhil Harry. I'll get to the film in a second, but first here's some background, and if you're kind of impatient and want to get right to the film, here's some timestamps. So in October, I got kind of bored, and I was watching some film on Rashawn Gary in the middle of physics class, and I swear every play I'd look to the other side of the line, I saw f***ing Thor ripping through lines and tackling quarterbacks. I saw this dude with the most luscious flow I've ever seen in my life. Wait, no, hard pause. Yeah, so basically since then, Chase Winovich was pretty much my dream pick for the Pats. I thought we'd get him at 32, and the fact that he fell all the way to 77 just blew my mind. This dude really is the prototypical Rob Nikovich replacement the Pats have been desperately looking for, if Rob Nikovich had better hair. Even though Michigan generally tended to use him as a traditional hand-in-the-dirt 4-3 defensive end, I can see him transitioning really well into the Patriots hybrid system, especially with him dropping into robber and flats occasionally as a joker, the same way Rob Ninkovich did. I'm going to point out that a common knock on Winovich is that he's just too small to play 4-3 defensive end and just too unathletic to play 3-4 outside linebacker in the NFL. But, you know, just comparing his and Ninkovich's measurements, they're pretty similar in size. That's really not something I'm worried about. Ninkovich was 6'2", 260. Winovich is 6'3", 256. So let's start off by looking at his play against the run. And holy sh can Chase Winovich play against the run. So when I look at a defensive end setting the edge against the run, there's really one thing I key in on. One word, and that's control. Control. How often can the defensive end avoid being moved by the offensive lineman? How often can he get his hands inside, just engage and shed? Who's actually in control at every matchup? Obviously, there's mechanics that go into it, which I'll, I'll get into a little bit later. But you get the point, right? It's all about controlling the point of attack. And in an edge's case, the idea is filtering everything back into the line. And in Thor's case here, he's seemingly always in control. He understands how to play his gap, and his push-pull is goddamn elite. Very rarely, if at all, have I seen Winovich get washed down against the edge against a blocker. So, in this play against Notre Dame, for example, just a disclaimer, I'm going to be using a ton of Notre Dame clips here because it's my favorite tape of him. Just watch him attack the edge. Let's start off at his stance. Notice how he's in a 5-tech alignment as a 4-3 defensive end, and he's in a 3-point stance. This is really where he did most of his rushing. Let's go through this play in some detail. Starting with his ball get-off, he really doesn't explode off the line much, but you can see his hip level and pad level start off great, so he's got immediate leverage on the right tackle. Watch the hand placement here, too. He pops up, and bam, hands are immediately inside the right tackle. That's the control we're talking about. So now he's got low pad level, he's got hands inside, and he's got a rooted base. And watch how the tackle's leaning backwards here. That's power, power. Now, part of what I really love about Winovich is his mental game. He's got great hand placement here. So what that allows him to do is stay aware with his head and to actually look around for the ball. He's aware of where the ball is, and he's always out there playing the ball instead of playing the player, if that makes sense. So in this particular play, Winovich is stacking the block instead of actively pass rushing because he sees a play-action run threat, and he's waiting to see what it is. Because he's grounded and he's got the superior hand placement, he can kind of hold off his blocker on the stack, and therefore hold his gap as long as necessary till he knows for sure if the play is a run or a pass. And at this moment right here, you can see he kind of tells it's a pass. He knows he can just go after the QB. So we saw how hard Winovich was pushing previously, right? The tackle was leaning back and everything. So if Winovich transfers that push momentum into a pull, tackle's pretty much screwed. And, you know, that's exactly what he does here. If Winovich were to have a signature move, it would be this push-pull, in my opinion. I love watching him do this. It's, it's amazing. And it does, he does it the exact same way Rob Nikovich did it. And at this point, I could pretty much just show you a compilation of him shedding tackle after tackle with that move. You get the point. He's good at it, right? So another thing I noticed about Winovich is that he knows how to play vertical against zone runs, which is a really useful trait, especially considering it was the crux of Belichick's game plan to stop the Rams' run offense in the Super Bowl. So watch the vertical rush here. Not only does Winovich still have control of the outside here, but his penetration means the running back is going to have to cut it back inside, and it also means the running back's primary B and C gap targets are going to be cut off, meaning he has to cut it back into the A gap, into the middle of the line, into all the trash. Now, this play specifically was a QB keeper. You get the idea, though. Winovich's approach would have been effective against the same blocking scheme had the ball been handed off to the running back. Same idea in this play. Winovich plays right vertical through the blocks and pulls and forces the running back to have to take the ball outside the line, where he gets tackled pretty quickly. Just straight up and down running, stop that zone run. Now, fair warning, these next two plays are pretty much pure defensive lineman porn. They combine Thor's stacking ability with his ability to play vertical when he needed to. In this play, he starts off as a 5-tech, but his responsibility is to shadow the B-gap since he knows the linebacker rotation is going to cover the C-gap for him. Basically, he's got to pinch inside and hold off that B-gap and essentially create a wall on the edge for his linebacker to come in and finish. Now watch this pinch. 
he gets to the stack and he's got his tackle leaning backwards and everything and he compresses the line so there's no space at all for the running back to run it inside and here's what i love he's maintaining contact with his hands he's got his hands inside so when he sees the running back start to approach his lane he can do a signature rip pull and shed the block almost effortlessly just watch him sort through all this trash in the trenches to find the running back and make the tackle no lazy shoulder throws into his blocker or anything just careful calculated hand placement with great ball awareness and now the next play is equally magnificent. Notre Dame decides to go with a pin and pull run to the short side of the field. Winovich does a great job of getting vertical first and then taking on his blocker with square hips and shoulders. He's got low pad level two and he basically stops a 300 pound or so man running at him full speed virtually immediately. He explodes off and he sends the arms to create separation while keeping his eyes on the running back and since he's got so much vertical penetration and he's got help towards the outside of the line, the running back pretty much has to cut it right back into Winovich, where Winovich finishes pretty effectively. That's some pretty good run defense. So obviously the running game is important, and Winovich is a beast there. Let's talk about the pass rush as well. That's something that the Patriots have struggled with quite a bit. We've had quite a few good run stoppers like Lawrence Guy who have struggled in pass rush, and this is something that Winovich can provide. He's a multidimensional player. So Winovich likes to use a few main pass rush moves. That signature push-pull we talked about, uh, an outside speed rush rip, and a straight bull rush, and he also has this amazing dual hand chopper swat. So let's start off with his outside pass rush moves. Winovich really isn't very quick or flexible, so his outside pass rushing skills aren't the greatest in the world. He doesn't finish very often, but what he does do is he does force the QB to step up quite a bit, which is important. So he's had good results on some plays, but you know that's mainly because of how he set up the tackle with previous plays uh, bull rushing or you know rushing inside not necessarily a bad thing because it does show he has a plan when he rushes but the point here is that his hip and shoulder bend does seem stiff at times he's pretty good about masking his deficiencies with his mental game and his motor so in this play for example one of his tries to go with an outside speed rush and what i like here is how he puts a couple moves together he starts off with that two-handed swat i quickly mentioned and i'll get into more later and what i kind of like is how the tackle gets off balance here and he transitions this into a rip now, when it comes to bending the corner, though, Winovich really doesn't get his shoulder down. He really doesn't flex his hip much, which combined with his only average get-off and his average lateral speed, it ends up taking him out of the play a lot. The quarterback is still forced to step up in the pocket here, so despite not getting any contact, he does influence the play like I talked about. Now, quick thing here, I want to mention this because there's no way I can talk about Winovich without mentioning this. Watch the motor here, right? Look how he gets taken out of the play. He's chased out of the play, but he still hauls ass to try to get to the quarterback. And, you know, one thing I really love about this play is how well Winovich sees angles. So watch how he starts off chasing the quarterback with a little flatter angle towards the sideline. The moment he sees his quicker teammates closing in, he changes up his angle, go more upfield. And he understands if they can't make the tackle, he'll be upfield to finish. And that's mental awareness. So now here's another speed rush. And this one is a little bit more of a pure speed rush. You'll notice the same thing again when it comes to running in a straight line. Winovich does get upfield pretty quickly to the spot that he needs to. Uh, right before when it comes to bending the corner but when it comes to actually bending the corner he really just doesn't have that hip ankle shoulder flexion to move smoothly into that transition and you know he's not great about finishing on that tight angle once again he does get the QB to step up which is you know great but the move is still lacking now let's hit on his two-handed swat really quickly because this is really a thing of beauty after setting up his tackle with a few of these outside speed rushes and bull rushes uh, Winovich loves to use this move to the inside so in this example, watch how he stays square to the tackle, kind of stutters and head fakes a little, and it's all pretty efficient. The tackle really doesn't know what to expect, and I think this is really important. He doesn't get caught up in trying to be too fancy with any of his head fakes or stutters. He gets to the point of contact on his own terms and on time, right? And then here comes that two-handed chop where he cleans up pretty nicely. Now, one thing I'd like to see out of him a little more is a little more synchronization on the footwork. Ideally, you want your right hand linked to your right foot and your left hand linked to your left foot. You know, especially when rushing inside where double teams are a big possibility. It just puts you in a better body position, just gives you better leverage. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Same type of play here, same type of, you know, two-handed chop move in this play. Winovich does a good job of squaring up his hips here and getting the tackle to lean forward. And all that engaging and immediate hands to the inside I showed off during his running game, this is what it leads to. The moment he engages, the tackle is leaning forward, and Winovich gets hands on the tackle and just swats and takes his inside lane. Now, back to the synchronization... Watch how he does a much better job this time. You see how his left foot hits the ground exactly when his left hand engages, and you see how he times his swat with his right hand just as his right foot lands. That puts him in a much better position to finish this play, because now even though the tackle's holding him, 
one of which still has the hip leverage and body positioning to power through and get pressure. Now, what I really like about Chase when he pass rushes is how he actually has a plan when it comes to pass rushing. As I mentioned before, he'll set up moves over the course of a game. Like in the Notre Dame game here, by this point, he's bull rushed and tried a few moves inside already. So when he squares up his hips to the tackle here, the tackle is expecting a move to the inside. And as the tackle grounds up, Winovich gives him a little bit of a swat to the inside, and the tackle just takes it hook, line, and sinker. By this point, though, Winovich engages and goes to a signature rip pull, transitioning pretty much immediately to point B, leaving the tackle on the ground, and he meets Devin Bush in the backfield for a sack. He uses a similar tactic here, and this time Winovich is actually trying to bull rush, and he realizes the tackle pretty much has him grounded. So even though his original tactic doesn't work, again, he switches right up to plan B, instantly switches up, and ends up getting good pressure on the play. So now that we've taken a look at his pass rush and run defense, let's talk about some miscellaneous stuff. There's literally no way I can do a scouting report on Winovich without talking about this guy's motor and general attitude. This guy plays like someone who's possessed. The sheer number of hustle plays this guy makes is just insane. He never stops moving, which I know Belichick really loves to see, especially from his defensive lineman, because you'll see him making a ton of tackles 15, 20 yards downfield just out of pure hustle. Now, one criticism I do have of Chase is his relative lack of athleticism. Can't really help it or anything, just I've seen it slow him down. Uh, Despite posting some pretty decent combine numbers, actually, on tape he looks slower than what his numbers suggest. His lateral movement and change in direction aren't the greatest. He can look kind of stiff at times. Uh, And there's just a few plays where I've seen his mental game be much faster than his physical game, right? He'll recognize the play immediately, but he just isn't able to get there fast enough because he just doesn't have the speed to do so. And because of that, really, his open field tackling isn't particularly great either. He doesn't have the ability to mirror the ball carrier nearly as effectively as someone more athletic. And, you know, his tackling form and everything is fine. It's just about whether or not he can put himself in a position to actually make the tackle. Now, to finish off this review, I'm going to give you an official number grade on Chase Winovich. I think now's a pretty good time for me to introduce my brand new analytics model, S-Track. So here's how this works. Basically, I go through and I grade a player on certain positional traits from 1 to 10. Uh, and the algorithm's going to go through and give me a final grade from 1 to 100 for the player. And the idea is that for each trait, a rating of 1 means absolutely horrible, 5 means average, and 10 means absolutely incredible. So let's go through this for Winovich, and I'm going to be entering Chase Winovich as an edge rusher. Uh, We talked about him being a 4-3 defensive end, so that's what we're going to grade him as. So here's all the traits. This is all predetermined. This is part of the algorithm. I'm going to be rolling out a program so you guys can actually put in your own grades and get your own results from this. So let's go right through this. For strength, Chase Winovich does a pretty good job of styming and moving his tackles. He gets a 9 from me. For pressure consistency, he does a good job at resetting the line of scrimmage pretty much every single play. He gets an 8. For edge support, he obviously gets a 10. And for block shedding, he obviously gets a 10 as well. Tackling, he gets a 7. Since as we discussed, his tackling form is pretty great, but his open field work needs some improvement. For hand placement, he gets a 9. For power rush, he gets an 8.5. And for finesse rush, I'm going to give him a 6.5. For explosiveness, he's shown flashes of explosion, but he's pretty inconsistent to the point where I'll give him a 6.5. For bend, again, he's not amazing, but he's not awful either, but he's still above average in my opinion, so he gets a 7. For motor, he gets a 10, because, you know, motor's kind of Chase Winovich's thing. And lastly, for big play factor, you know, fumbles, taking it back to the house, all that, Chase Winovich gets a 7.5. He's not going to be a super flashy player, but at the same time, he's still going to be an above average playmaker. So putting all these ratings into the model, the model is going to give us a final rating of, drumroll please, 86.65, right? That rounds up to an 87, which just squeaks him into the first round. So first round grade seems pretty accurate. In all honesty, it sounds just about right in my opinion. So holy crap, that was a long film review and took me quite a bit of work to make. So if you like that, please be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of Winovich in the comments below. And I'll probably continue making these videos for other past draft picks. So expect an Akil Harry video coming up soon. Go Pats!